There is a vortex. There is a whirlpool, an imminent vortex of hilarity on a row. It is a whirlpool that I have already spoken of, in which the master and his ship are submerged. We also discover that a simple insinuation, a simple insinuation, a virgin clue, is hovering above around the whirlpool. Now, as we have said, the whirlpool, which represents at once the nothingness and the shipwreck of contemporary poetry, is perfectly symbolized by the zero, by its voluminous and its and by its circular form alike, upon which the text insists, insists with its coiling motion. So let's suppose that the text between the two comes in is speaking of the whirlpool, that is, is a riddle of the zero. The zero is at the center. Okay? But what is it that coils around the zero? What is this insinuation that coils around the zero? An insinuation, a virgin clue. In other words, it is here the two come see which are identified with an enigma, an insinuation, a simple insinuation that must be elucidated to discover the two other numbers that frame the central zero of the number. What it is said, what is said is that come see and come see are two enigma, two insinuations, simple insinuations, that are turning around the whirlpool of the zero. So we have our first cipher of the number, the zero at the center, but we must understand what is turning around. <coughs> Traditionally, the come see are read as ellipse, as a vague illusion, come see as if. Characteristic of a poet, Mallarmé, who, faithful to his dream, refuses to flatly describe the real and prefers to suggest it through a series of comparisons. I do not agree with this reading at all. In truth, these two segments do not constitute two incomplete hypothetical locutions, as if. On the contrary, they propose a very precise comparison. To understand this very important point, we must go back and recall that the master is submerged progressively. For on page 4 and 5, we see the wave rise to the master face, which they witten with their foam. It sees a bird, creating a bird on, the, on its face. The master's head Underneath the raised fist that holds the dice is thus said to be useless. Why is the head of the master useless? Because it alone remains above the waves, along with his hand, and thus seems to be decapitated, cut off from the rest of his already submerged body. Now this theme of decapitation recurs often in Malarmé, even obsessively, as in Caravaggio. Decapitation for the poet is a good symbol. It is a symbol of the purification of the spirit. That is to say, literally, of the separation of the body from the spirit. Mallarmé, we have a precious example of this obsession for decapitation. You know that Mallarmé tried his whole, his whole life to complete a poem entitled Herodiad, Herodiad. This poem is begun in 1865 in the form of a scene between Herodiad and her nurse. Mallarmé tried to complete this first, part, this first part with an unfinished text called Les Noces d'Herodiad, The Marriage of Herodiad, The Marriage of Herodiad, drafted in 1898 and thus contemporary, exactly contemporary with the coup de day, which is important as we shall see. No, this poem, The Marriage of Herodiad, speaks of St. John the, Saint John the Baptist, and how this decapitation obtained by Herodiad, here identified with Salome. The text of 18, 
98 even contains St. John's victory song at the very instant when his head is decapitated, leaving the body of the saint triumphantly launched toward the sky, behaving once more then as a symbol of the spirits being freed from the constraints of the body. We now understand that the symbolic decapitation of the master with his head alone above the wave does not announce a disaster, but a purification of the self that places the hero of the coup de day in a position similar to that of Saint John, announcing the coming after him of the Messiah, of the number. Now, the Nos de Rodia begins with a typographical configuration very similar to the path of the Kamsi. You can see on the wall. The poem, as you see, begins with a C, an if. This C is interrupted by 14 verse, which constitute a huge parenthesis before the reprise of the initial C at the end of the 14th verse. There is thus, once again, a diagonal of C, like the diagonal of the com C in the page 6 of Coup de Day, from top left in the first verse to the bottom at the end of the 14th verse. Alors, now, here is a decisive remark. In French, C doesn't only signify the English if. In French, C has another signification. It is also a note, a note of music. In Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si. You say T, I say in French, we like, say C. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si. But this C, you know, was produced as a in a very particular manner, because the C, as a note, is originally takes its name from the initials of Sancte Ioannes, of Saint John, Sancte Ioannes, S-I. Given the initial position of the C in the nose of Herodiad, in the nose de Herodiad, the marriage of Herodiad, one can no longer believe in chance. C equals SE is I Saint John, which the poem is talking about. The true meaning of come C now appears clearly to us. If we come back to the page six, we understand that the come C is no longer or not only a vague proposition as if, but a precise comparison with Saint John. Come see means like Saint John. But a comparison of what of who with Saint John? Firstly, a comparison of the decapitated saint with the virgin clue. That is to say, with the feather that tops the, ma the master's cap. We will discover, in fact, in the pages that follow, that the two elements of the master headgear, his tuck and his plume, continue to turn around the real pool once the master is already drawn, before sinking in their turn into the waves. We thus understand that the sea of St. John is compared to the symbolic head of the hero, his cap, which is turning around the real pool, the latter having acceded to the full purification of self by being reduced to the plume of the writing poet. So the decapitation has two, uh, two, two, etapes, two stage. First the head, and then the tuck and the plume, the symbolic head of the, of the master. The, this purific the purification of his spirit is now turning around the whirlpool. This, de this decapitation, approximating the master to the saint, 
signifies that the very important thing is going to follow the decapitation thus played out. No longer as in St. John the coming of the Messiah, but the coming of the unique measure, the unique number that cannot be another. But if we understand that, if we, under we understand that C is the initial of the scent, we also understand that it is identified with a note. C is a note as the initials of St. John. That note, which in the major scale, the scale that everyone knows, is the seventh note of the octave. Do, Ré, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si. Comme si, it is a simple insinuation, a childish insinuation of the seven. Comme si, mean as seven. It is a perfect encryption of the number formulated as the exact center of the poem, page six. So what is a, what is a number? Comme si seven, the word pool zero, comme si seven, seven or seven. I told you it was like boy. We must now verify that sac consecrated is indeed the seven or seventh word of the poem. I have done so. It was a long, long work in the number of the siren. You can find it if you buy the book at the end. At the end of the book, the count of words is given in full and confirms our hypothesis. The word sac is indeed the seven or seventh word of the poem. It cannot be a coincidence. <laughs> well, if I would finish here, it would just be another version of Da Vinci Code. I understand that. The problem is, what is interesting? Once this is demonstrated, what do we conclude from it? Once we have discovered this, we are at once satisfied with having proved that there does indeed exist in the coup de day an encrypted meter. Malarme counted the world rather than syllables. But at the same time, we remain frustrated because we don't understand how this is supposed, this very strange counting, to resolve the, pro the problem of modern poetry. Know how the strange meter is a unique number that cannot be another. It seems a childish riddle. It is indeed this question that we must now resolve if we want to penetrate to the very heart of the 1897 poem. To do so, we must start again from the following point. Madame, in the decade between 1885 and 1895, tried, in fact, to respond to two challenges that of free verse which demotes matter to being nothing more than the chance of gratuitous or political inven invention, but also that of Wagner, the, re the challenge of Wagner, who usurped, usurped from the French poets the responsibility for founding a religion of art with his lyrical drama. Malarmé was really uh, preoccupied by the fact that the religion of art which should be the work of the poets since the Romantics, have been realized, or pseudo-realized, by Bayreuth and lyrical drama of Wagner. Mellamé tried to refutate the pretension of Wagner that he could have produced this religion of art with the, the lyrical drama, with opera. He formulated for that a radical critique of Wagner, the weakness of total art, Wagnerian total art for him, resided in the fact that it was content to put a drama on stage, and in consequence achieved nothing beyond a return to the Greeks, to the Greeks and to tragedy. That is to say, tragedy, the principle of the mere contemplation by the city of its own aporias, aporias conducted through fiction. According to Mallarmé, Wagner sought to transpose to the German people what the Greek did with tragedy, to make them see themselves through mythology, 
through a reflection of themselves on the stage. <laughs> 